In the past, you may have heard an informal definition of continuity. Something like a function is continuous if you can draw it without ever picking up your pencil. In this video, we'll develop a more precise definition of continuity based on limits. It can be helpful to look at some examples of functions that are discontinuous, that is, functions that fail to be continuous, in order to better understand what it means to be continuous. Please pause this video and try to draw graphs of at least two different functions that fail to be continuous in different ways. One common kind of discontinuity is called a jump discontinuity. A function has a jump discontinuity if its graph separates into two pieces with a jump in between them. This particular function can be described as a piecewise defined function with two linear equations f of x equals 2x when x is less than or equal to 1 and f of x equals negative x plus 2 when x is greater than 1. Another common kind of discontinuity is called a removable discontinuity. You may have encountered these before when you learned about rational functions with holes in them. For example, the function f of x equals x minus 3 squared times x minus 4 divided by x minus 4, which has a hole when x equals 4 and otherwise looks like the graph of x minus 3 squared. This kind of discontinuity is called removable because you could get rid of it by plugging the hole, just by defining f to have an appropriate value when x equals 4. So in this case, you'd want f of x to be the same when x is not equal to 4, but you'd want it to have the value of 1 when x equals 4, and that would amount to plugging the hole and making it continuous. In this original example, our function had a removable discontinuity because it wasn't defined when x equals 4. But a function could also have a removable discontinuity because it's defined in the wrong place at x equals 4. For example, too high or too low to fit the trend of f. A discontinuity can also occur at a vertical asymptote, where it's called an infinite discontinuity. For example, the rational function g of x is 1 over x minus 2 has an infinite discontinuity at x equals 2. Occasionally, you may encounter discontinuities that don't look like any of these. For example, the graph of the function y equals cosine of 1 over x has a wild discontinuity at x equals 0 because of the wild oscillating behavior there. So for a function to be continuous at x equals a, we need it to avoid all of these problems. To avoid a jump discontinuity, we can insist that the function's limit has to exist at x equals a. To avoid a whole or removable discontinuity, we can insist that f has to be defined at x equals a. To avoid the other kind of removable discontinuity, in which f of a is defined, but it's in the wrong place, we can insist that the limit of f of x as x goes to a has to equal f of a. Sometimes the definition of continuity is written with just the third condition, and the first two conditions are implied. Notice that these three conditions not only exclude jump discontinuities and removal discontinuities, they also exclude infinite discontinuities and wild discontinuities. For example, in our third example, the function can't be continuous at x equals 2 because it fails to have a limit at x equals 2 and it fails to have a value at x equals 2. In our wild discontinuity example, the limit also fails to exist at x equals 0, so the function can't be continuous there. So what are all the places where this function f is not continuous, and why? Please take a moment to think about it for yourself. The function's not continuous at negative 3, because the function's simply not defined there. The function's not continuous at x equals 1 because of that jump discontinuity. In the language of limits, we say that the limit of f of x does not exist. When x equals 2, the limit of the function exists and equals 3, but the value of the function is down here at negative 1. 
So the function's not continuous because the limit doesn't equal the value. At x equals 3, the function is not continuous because, once again, the limit doesn't exist. Notice that at x equals negative 2, even though the function turns a corner, the function is still continuous because the limit exists and equals 2, and the value of the function is also 2. The function drawn here is not continuous at x equals negative 2 because the limit doesn't exist at x equals negative 2. The limit from the left is 1, while the limit from the right is 0. But it is true that the value of the function at x equals negative 2 is equal to the limit of the function from the left side. That is, f of negative 2 is equal to the limit as x goes to negative 2 from the left of f of x. Notice that we can't say the same thing about the right limit. The limit from the right is 0, while the value of the function is 1, and those aren't equal. In this situation, we say that f is continuous from the left, but not from the right. By the same reasoning, at x equals 1, the function is not continuous, but it is continuous from the right, because the limit from the right is equal to the value of the function. Notice that f is not continuous from the left here because the limit from the left is about 1 and a half, while the value of the function is 1. In general, we say that a function f is continuous from the left at x equals a if the limit as x goes to a from the left of f of x is equal to f of a. And a function is continuous from the right at x equals a if the limit as x goes to a from the right of f of x equals f of a. In practical terms, a function is continuous from the left if the endpoint is included on the left piece, and a function is continuous from the right if the endpoint is included on the right piece. This video gave a precise definition of continuity at a point in terms of limits. Namely, a function is continuous at the point x equals a if the limit as x goes to a of the function is equal to the function's value at a.